start with is the diagram that I handed out to everybody. So we need to label our diagram properly. Notice that this is the unit circle. So the, um, oops, uh, the circle is going through negative one, negative one, one, and one. And so that means it's a radius of one. That's important for a couple of reasons. How can I label? And notice that B here is this angle. If it's like a terminal angle. So if I take that terminal arm and I rotate it, angle in standard position, and I've rotated it B, that's going to take me to this point here. So what are the coordinates of this point? You gave me the... Huh? You, gave, you wrote it on this one. Uh, hilarious. Coast B and sine... You could have looked really smart there, right? Yeah. Know, yeah. <laughs> and sine of B. Because yesterday we looked at this already and it was cos theta, sine theta. And you can rebuild this from Sir Kick Sir Ticks. It, also, that's not that hard as long as you remember that's what you're doing. Um, but it's not theta because our angle is B. Okay? So what would the point, what would the um, other point, the coordinates of the other point B? Isaac? I like that thinking, though. You were thinking about, like, the cast rule, that kind of thing. Somebody dropped that in the class this morning, and I picked it up. That's what happened. Now. Oh. Come on! It's the, it's the same. It's just the angle's not B. This is not hard. You don't need cheat sheet for this. Close. A is this whole thing. So it's cos. It's just cos A. Yeah, just cos of A, sine of A. Um, what is this angle here? See me? Not quite, not cos A subtract cos B. You're on the right track, hold on. Bang. No. What's the angle? A minus B, yes. Yeah, you had the right idea, but we don't need the cosine there because we're not looking for points. We're just looking for the angle. Um, and the last thing we want is we want a name for the um, side length across from this angle that we're looking at, A minus B, and we're going to call it C because we're used to calling that in some of the formulas that we're, that we're going to use for this. So we're going to call this side length C. What I'm talking about is from the green point to the red point is length C. If you were to, if this were to come up on a quiz or a test, because we often ask you to, to show uh, the proof, if we were to do that, and you also had to label the diagram. If you labeled the diagram wrong, but you memorize the proof, like it's not going to match, it's not going to make any sense. So even if I call this the first angle A and the second angle B, then it would be B minus A, and my coses and my sines would be in different, or like this cos A sine A, cos B sine B would be flipped, and like things would kind of fall apart. So you do have to get that part right as well. So you got to make sure you, you kind of understand it. Okay, now we're going to use... Um, after all of that, everything else we're going to do, you learned in grade 10 and you've been doing it for years. So it should be really easy for us. Okay. Grade 10 is such a pivotal year. You learn so many important processes and things in grade 10, um, that we just build on for the rest of math basically. Okay. So who remembers this? Cosine law? Sound familiar? Yes? That's sine law. A over sine A is B over sine B. What's cosine law? It's the other one. It's a little bit longer. It's very familiar to something that we know very well, but it's got a little bit of extra stuff on the end. Anybody want to take a crack at it? Bang? Subtract to 
I changed I changed the A's and B's around just because we've already labeled our thing. But yes, and then very nice. That's exactly it. Now we looked at that's familiar, right? It's got Pythagorean theorem in it. In fact, Pythagorean theorem is just a special case of cosine law because if you take the cos of 90, you get zero, and the second part goes away. And the Pythagorean theorem is just cosine law in a right triangle. That's all it is. Okay. Um, now we're going to take our values from our triangle, and the triangle that we care about is, is the, the blue one that's got the C and the A minus B in it. That's the one we're interested in. So we've still got C squared. And what is length A? So that's the other two side lengths. That's like if this was length A and this was length B. What is length A? We know what the length is? Anybody want to take a guess? Come on. One? Yes. It's one, right? It's a unit circle. So any radius, any length that goes from the center of the circle to the outside is one. So one squared, and then what's going to be the length of B? One. one. Good. One squared minus two. Okay, A is one and B is one. Cos of what is C? That's angle C. That's A minus B. I'm just going to uh, simplify this a little bit. C squared equals 1 squared is 1 plus 1 squared which is 1 is 2. So we get 2 minus 2 times 1 times 1. That's still 2. 2 cos bracket A minus B. And we are done with cosine law. That was easy. Right? As far as proofs go, it's pretty easy so far. This one you might not be quite as familiar with, but you did it in grade 10. Length of a line segment. Remember this? A little bit maybe. Length of a line segment. Analytic geometry. And you do the median and the altitude. Do you remember that stuff? Yeah, that stuff's tricky, isn't it? And then you do the shortest distance from a point to a line. You probably did that, which is a really cool little thing. Anyway, length of a line segment and the midpoint, like calculating the midpoint between two or of a line segment or something. Yeah, see? Kind of coming back. Anybody want to take a crack at this equation? Very close. So length, very good. Length, yeah, that's that's impressive because uh, nobody this morning could remember that. Um, it is x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared, and it's the square root of all of that. Okay. So now we are going to start, we are going to sub in values to that. Subbing in values, that's easy. You've been doing that forever. So L is the length of the line that we care about. Uh, so that's C equals square root. Now, this is going to be a little bit long, so i got to leave some space. What is the X value? What is my second X value? What are the X values of the points of that line segment? Yeah, cos B or cos A, whichever one you call first or second. So this is like cos... A minus, and then the x value of the first one, which is cos B, order, order, order won't matter, squared, plus, and what are the coordinates of the y's? Sine A, sine B, is that right? Minus sine B, all squared, and it's the square root of all of that. Okay? Still good so far? We're going to do two things at the same time for the next step. We are going to square both sides because we're going to need that later anyway. We don't have to do it now, but we might as well. Then we can stop writing that square root sign. And we're going to expand the binomials that are inside under the square, that are currently under the square root, which is a little bit nasty because this isn't something that you've probably done a lot of with cos A's and cos B's, but all it is again is this, A minus B all squared. Does anybody remember what that is? That's A minus B all squared. 
Do. Yes, good. And what? And then when we actually do it, does anybody remember? No. Yeah, good. So, it, but I, I'm going to show the long way just in case anybody. But you, but we're not going to do it with the cos a's because it'll be like off the page. It'll be way too long. So, a times a is a squared. A times negative b is negative a b. Negative b times a is negative a b. Negative b times negative b is plus b squared. You don't have to write this part down. Which is a squared minus two a b's plus b squared. That's our little shortcut. That's our formula. We remember that one now. So let's give this a try. So if I square both sides, I get c squared equals cos a minus cos. Just go with me. Okay, you should be able to. You should be able to look at this and follow this after. But um, so it's a squared. What's my a? It's cos a. So it's cos a squared, which we we write like this: cos squared a. And then minus 2ab, so minus 2 times this times this. So minus 2 cos a cos b plus b squared. My b is cos b, so plus cos squared b. Plus, same thing for the next bracket. Sine squared a minus 2 sine, whoop. Got ahead of myself there. Sine A sine B plus sine squared B. We don't need the square root sign because we squared both sides, so we got it. Kind of messy, kind of nasty, but still doable from grade 10, expanding a, a squaring a binomial, right? Binomial expansion, that's all that was. Okay, now you tell me, what do we do next? I see a few people with some ideas. Some people sit there thinking, this is too hard. I can't do this. That's a fixed mindset. You can do this. Try. This, I'm telling you, even if you don't get it this time, this is not beyond the realm of your capabilities. You've been doing this for a while, too. What do you see in there that we can do? Lucas, what were you thinking? Uh, well, I don't know if it's sort of like using some sort of like trig identity. Like what? Or for sine squared, you could go 1 minus O squared or something. Oh, yeah, we could. I don't know how far Why would we do that? Yeah, but but uh, that, that, yep. Um, could we do uh, cos squared B plus sine squared A? So that turns into root again. Cos squared B plus sine squared B is 1. That's our Pythagorean. So same idea, but it's actually easier if we do it this way. That, but your way would have given us yeah, exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So C squared equals. So I'm going to rewrite this. You wouldn't necessarily have to. Um, but look at sine squared A plus cos squared A. Ah, that's 1. Nice. That's going to that's gonna be helpful. What else can I do? Yeah. Plus sine squared b plus cos squared b. And turns out we can't do anything else, at least not really yet with the other part, so we're just going to write it down. Whoops, 2 uh, cos a cos b minus 2 sine a sine b. Very nice. Okay, let's, uh, let's do that. C squared equals 1 plus 1. And... Uh, Anybody have an idea about what we what we could try with the rest of it? Yeah, you can common factor that negative two. Let's do it. Is that going to help? I don't know. Like, who? Well, I do know, but whoever whoever did this in the first place. They maybe didn't know, but you try it. That's the thing. You try and see what happens, right? Minus 2, and what are we left with? Cos A, cos B, plus, be careful of that, right? Because I factor out negative 2 from both. Sine A, sine B, bracket. 
Now, again, I simplify this just a little bit. 1 plus 1 is 2 minus 2 bracket cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. Ha! Ah, beautiful. How much room do I have? Oh, way, tons of room. That's perfect. So look at what we've done. We have using two different uh, relationships, cosine law for one and length of the line segment for another. What have we done? We've come up with with two expressions for the squared length of that side in our diagram, right? So the C was the length of that side in the diagram, and C squared is equal to this, and C squared is also equal to that. So what could I do? They're equal to each other. Yeah, like we, yeah we, we just talked about the same thing. If two things are, are equal to the same thing, then they are equal to each other, right? So this up here and this here, I'm taking these two lines and I'm going therefore, and I've got two minus two cos of A minus B is equal to 2 minus 2 bracket cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. Now what? We can, but that's not how we want to do it. But you're on the right track. There's a really easy, like, simplifying step here. Isaac? Yeah, I'm going to fix that a little bit. Subtract two from both sides. Those are gone. Divide both sides by negative two. Those are gone. Let's write down what we have left. Cos of A minus B is equal to cos A cos B plus sine A, whoops, sine B. That's our formula. So now we're done. Turns out it's useful. You may not understand why yet, but you'll see in a little bit. Remember when I said there's six of these? And four of them in particular are very similar, so you got to get the you got to get those four like down. So this weekend you're going to really try to make sure you've nailed this one. So we start adding on to them. They're not, but the the four that are similar, like it sort of helps that they're similar because you know the general idea of all of them. What I, what, what you want to remember for cos is you're subtracting in the brackets, so you're adding here outside the brackets, right? Minus here is a plus here for the cosine one. So that's one thing that you have to pick up on that some people might forget and go minus and minus, but that would be wrong. Okay. Any questions about that? Proof. Label the diagram correctly because if you get your A's and B's in the wrong places, this proof with these letters isn't going to work. If you use the right letters, then you'd be fine. You got to label the diagram. Cosine law, simplify a bit. Length of a line segment, simplify a bit. Binomial expansion is a little bit harder, a little bit messier. Um, and then set the two equal to each other. Cancel the twos and you got it. That's the general idea. Yeah. Yeah. Like I would give you probably on the, I would give you this same diagram I gave you unlabeled. You got to label it and write that out. Yeah, you should anyway. I mean, length of the line segment doesn't come up that much, but cosine law is something you should kind of know anyway. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes, and now you get to derive all by yourself independently the formula for cos of A plus B. But it doesn't look anything like the one we just did, so don't worry, because look at what this says. Can you use this formula to find the formula for cos of A plus B. So I want you to see if you can think of anything. How can you use cos A minus B 
to turn it into cos A plus B. I just want you to think about that and see if we can figure something out first. Would it just be the opposite? I like the uh, hypothesizing. I'm not going to tell you the answer. Remember what I said about fixed mindsets. Don't sit there and think, I'm never going to be able to do this. Because if you feel that way, it's true. You won't. Try. See if you can come up with something. All I'm asking you is come up with the first step. And I wouldn't ask you to do something that is like not possible. So... And a good idea, and it's not that far off. It's hard to come up with something from. I, I, I admit that it's not easy to be creative and come up with something from nothing. What if I gave you this? Is that we're writing okay? Negative b. Let's see if that helps. All right, very nice. Lots of people took that and started running with it. That's awesome. Let's see what we caught. What does it mean? It means this. So if I start with this, cos of A minus B equals, what is it again? We're supposed to be trying to memorize this. Cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. This is the one that we just had, right? We just, we just came up with that one. That was the long one. And what if I let B equal negative B? What does that look like? I stick a negative b in there. So instead of b, instead of minus b, I have minus negative b. And if I do, if I put the negative b there, what do I have to do? Yeah, you got to put the negative b everywhere, right? Like it's weird to put b in for b, but this is just like subbing something in for a variable. I could sub 2 in, 
But if I sub two in for B, I sub two in everywhere for B. Very good. So I do cos A didn't change. Cos negative B plus sine A. Oh, we're so close. We're so close. Now what? That part's done. Would it just be negative cos A and cos B? Well, why? Because you know sine A to B. Not quite. Yep. Say that. What? Hold on. I'm going to say that. I'm going to. So everybody can hear. Cos negative B is equal to cos B. How, how do you know? Cos is even. So cos of negative theta is equal to cos theta, isn't it? Very nice. So bye-bye negative B, cos B, hello B. And? It's going to be negative sine A. So uh, for an odd function, sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine theta. So sine negative B is equal to negative sine B. So instead, I'm going to get minus sine A sine B. I took the negative from this one, and I stuck it out in front of the whole thing, right? Uh, I, saw, I saw at least three or four of you guess that this is what it was going to be. Good guess. Makes sense. But now we've proven it. But we started with something we already proved and proved this too, even in odd symmetry. What do you think? Okay, now let's use it. By the way, there's the other formulas. Don't write this down. We're going to do this on Monday. It's going to take too long. But look at how similar they are, right? Tan's a bit different. But these ones are really similar. So, But they're different. They're not the same, uh, unfortunately. So that's why, this, that's why you need to go home and nail cosine. So when we add sine onto it on Monday... The hardest part is making sure you don't get the two of them confused. If you're trying to memorize them both at the same time, it's going to be that much harder. Plus, there's another, there's like a little bit more to this when we actually start using it that you need to get used to. But we're going to spend three days on it. Okay. So determine the exact value of each of the following. 15 degrees. Where do those degrees come from all of a sudden? Well, we're going to start by doing one in degrees so we can understand a little bit of what we're doing. But the rest are, but all the questions that we actually do are going to be in radians. We need to find the exact value of this. What angles can we find the exact value of? So it could be cos of 45 minus 30. That's not the question that I asked. What angles can we find? The exact value of already. Any other special triangles? Which are what? I don't remember what they are for angles. I don't think. <laughs> for degrees, you mean? Yeah. Oh, degrees? Yeah, in degrees. 45, 60, and multiples of those, because I can also do 120 and 150 by using the angles in standard position and, and the cast rule and stuff like that, right? Very good, but those ones. We can also do 90 and 180 and 270. Those don't work. They are not helpful. Don't use those ever. Even though I'm saying this right now, some of you will still try and it will be wrong. Okay, so we cannot use 90, 180, 270, 360. Those do not work. They don't help. These help. Abdul, what were you saying before <laughs> when I interrupted you? So would you agree that the cos of 15 is equal to the cos of 45 minus 30? All I did was replace 15 with something else that equals 15. And I have a formula for this, which I can use now to figure it out. So this is equal to cos A, cos B, plus sine A, sine B. I'll do this one because we haven't been working in degrees for a little while, have we? Um, so how do we, so then we actually do it. So what's cos of 45? And this is where folks like, you know, I've been saying all along, it helps if you memorize these. If you do the homework, 
you'll memorize these automatically because in one question you're doing four of them and it's the same ones all the time and it'll take a long time if you don't memorize them and you have to go all the way back to the special triangles and that kind of thing. How can you tell which ones that they Just which ones first. So like the formula says cos A minus B. So I call this one A and this one B. Okay. Um, okay, so cos of 45 is 1 over root 2. Cos of 30 is 1 half. That's the one that we wanted to remember. No, sorry, that's not true. Cos of 60 is a half. Ooh, that's root 3 over 2. That's better. Plus sine 45 is 1 over root 2. And sine of 30 is a half. So you can use special triangles for that, but like I say, it is it, it helps speed things up, make you much more efficient if you know at least some of them. And now we expand, and this ends up being uh, root 3 over 2 root 2 plus 1 over 2 root 2, which is 1 plus root 3 over 2 root 2. We okay with that? Cool. What are the angles and radians from the special triangles that we can find the exact value of? That's not the question that I asked. Uh, so I'm going to I'm gonna help use what you said to answer my own question. Pi over 4, pi over 6. What else? Pi over 3. Pi over 3, thank you. So those three, um, which works out to, because we're going to, we want to turn them into 12s, because all the questions that we're working with right now are going to be over 12. Okay, so this is going to be um, 3 pi over 12, this one is uh, 2 pi over 12, this one is 4 pi over 12. You can use those and any multiple of those. 6 pi over 12 isn't going to be good because that's um, uh, pi over 2. But how about like 15 pi over 12? How about 8 pi over 12 or 9 pi over 12? which is also 3 pi over 4. So any, mul any, any of those three, 3 pi by 12, 2 pi by 12, 4 pi by 12, and the multiples thereof. For any 14 pi by 12, you could use that because it's a multiple of 2, like any of those would work. Okay. So what was it that you said? So that would be pi by 4 subtract pi by 6 would be 3 pi by 12 minus 2 pi by 12. I'm going to use this one, though. I'm going to use cos of, because we could use either of these, right? 4 pi by 12 minus 3 pi by 12, which gives you pi by 12, 1 pi by 12. But this is actually cos of pi by 3 minus pi by by four. Okay, so let's do this again quickly. Cos A, cos B, plus sine A, sine B. Cos pi by three is a half. Cos pi by four is one over root two. Sine of pi by 3 is root 3 over 2. Sine of pi by 4 is 1 over root 2. We get a common denominator again, and I get 1 plus root 3 over 2 root 2. Does that look familiar? That's the same answer as the last question. What's that all about? Well, we're kind of used to that because we get a lot of 1 over root 2s, 1 halves, and root 3 over 2s. What is pi by 12? 15, so of course it's going to be the same thing. What is pi by 3? 
60. What is pi by 4? 45. So for this one, we did 60 minus 45, but that's still 15, so it still worked. This one, we did 45 minus 30. That's 15. Still worked. Won't matter. There's going to there's be often different ways of doing these things. Okay, let's try a couple more. See if you can figure out how to get 7 pi by 12, and then we'll probably do the rest together to help speed things up. See if you can get 7 pi by 12. Because this, like doing all of that, the, the math that comes after, I mean, that, that takes a little bit of practice, but it's, it's this part of working with the fractions that some people struggle with a bit more. So what, at, what adds or subtracts 7 pi by 12? Give that a try. Look at your list if you have to. Get used to using the list. Good question. Do you have to subtract? No, we got a, we got a question for adding too, right? So most people um, figured this one out, had some idea. And again, there's going to be different ways of doing it. There's not necessarily one answer. But what it, but what most people used was 3 pi by 12 plus 4 pi by 12. 10 pi by 12 minus 3 pi by 12. I guess that would have worked too. Um, and this is cos of pi by 4 plus pi by 3. Right? Let me reduce it. So that's cos A cos B uh, minus sine A. Careful of that, sine B. Right? I'm adding this time. So then the formula says I'm subtracting on the other side. So that is 1 over root 2 times a half minus 1 over root 2 times root 3 over 2. 1 minus root 3 over 2 root 2. Any questions? We're going to do one more. It's a little bit different. Try this one.
Now I find a lot of people what they try to do is they do um, negative two and negative three, negative two plus negative three or negative two minus three. That'll work, but it's a little bit tricky because you're going to end up with a negative angle. And we haven't done a lot of work with negative angles. We've done it a little bit. And if you really know what you're doing, you can probably figure it out. But we haven't done a ton of work with them. So that wouldn't be my recommendation unless you do it and you really get like even an odd symmetry and that kind of thing. Because you would get negative 2 pi by 12 minus 3 pi by 12. So that negative 2 pi by 12 is going to stay negative in the whole question. So you got to figure that out. So there's an easier way. Vang, do you have it? No. Oh. Well, you're not allowed to use that. Yeah, that's true, but you're not allowed to do that. I want, you, I want you to actually do it this way. You're right, but I want you to actually do it this way. Yeah. How, what, what, are, what are the things for that? How'd you get that? 3 pi by 12 minus 8 pi by 12. That'll give you negative 5, right? Remember how I said you can use multiples of them? So let's try that. Equals cos 3 pi by 12 minus 8 pi by 12. Now be careful. This is cos pi by 4 minus what? No. 2 pi by 3, yeah. Pi by 3 is a related angle, but it's going to matter because it might end up giving us some negatives, depending on the quadrant. So minus 2 pi by 3. I Until you're really awesome at this, I would recommend showing at least one of these steps, if not both. Like for most of us, I think you, you do both these steps because it will really help you catch mistakes and that kind of thing. Cos pi by 4, cos 2 pi by 3, plus sine... Pi by 4, sine 2 pi by 3. Cos pi by 4 is 1 over root 2. Cos of 2 pi by 3? It's related to pi by 3, which is 1 half, and it's in the second quadrant, so it's negative 1 half. Isn't that right? So negative 1 half plus 1 over root 2, and then sine of 2 pi by 3. Well, again, related angles pi by 3, second quadrant sine's positive. So that one is root 3 over 2, positive root 3 over 2. So this ends up being root 3 minus 1 over 2 root 2. I hope I didn't go too fast for those. I did want to sort of save time and, and not take a ton of time doing the fraction math. But if you want to see it or if you have questions about that, we can talk about that, do that a bit more slowly. Um, any questions? Uh, what happens if you do like 4 pi over 12 minus 9 pi over 12? It should be the same thing. But like, yeah. Like you're, like you're probably what's going to happen is the negative is going to kind of end up in a different, like this negative was here, so that negative is going to be there or something, but it's going to, not on the root 3 over 2, but it's going to be, and then, but it's always going to work out the same. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Just like we did before, finding exact values. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 